In Lesson 2 of Module 1, our learning objectives are to develop an understanding of the origins or earliest beginnings of art, to discern between hardwired and cultural motives for making art, which come instinctually and which are learned, and explore some of the first subjects of art. The very first and oldest known form of prehistoric creativity is rock art, specifically copule petroglyphs, which occurred throughout the remote prehistoric world. No one knows why so many copules were carved, but they were made in very distant places from India to Australia, Europe, and Africa. This kind of universality, meaning something that occurs in all places or in all times, suggests that the making of these objects is not something culturally learned, but instinctual or hardwired, because people were doing this who had no con communication with each other. It was something that occurred spontaneously in very different parts of the world, and people did them the same way. The three million year old Mecca Ponscott pebble from South Africa is perhaps the most ancient art object in the world. But there is a dispute over whether it actually can be called an object of art because it was formed by nature, not humans. In archaeology and anthropology, a manuport is a natural object or an object formed by erosion as in the case of the Macaponscott pebble that has been moved from its original place by humans. The recognition of the facial image and valuing of the object have been credited for artistic awareness as curatorial acts like the work of a curator. A curator is the person responsible for a specific collection of cultural objects as in a museum. Manuports include stones or shells moved from coastal or river areas to places where people lived. This one has, was, is said to have been carried over a distance of several miles by Australopithecines, or early hominids who lived four to two million years ago. The word manuport derives from the Latin words manus, meaning hand, and porter, meaning to carry. As the making of sculpture evolved, Stone Age sculptors used, obviously, stone tools to do their carving. The materials they carved were quite varied, depending on the region. Prehistoric sculptors used mammoth bone and ivory in their carving. Ivory includes any animal tooth or tusk, as well as the more perishable wood. In addition to bone and wood, artists also sculpted in stone especially softer varieties like limestone and sandstone, as well as harder varieties like quartz and serpentine. Clay was also used widely in stone figures. Let's look at the types of objects they made with these materials and tools. Prehistoric sculpture has been organized into five basic categories that we'll explore. Ultra-primitive humanoid objects, primitive reliefs, Venus figurines, carvings of anthropomorphic figures, and carvings of animals. The early Stone Age figurines of the woman or Venus of Barakat Ram, discovered in the Golan Heights of Israel, and the Venus of Tantan, discovered in Tantan, Morocco, are considered to be among the oldest items of prehistoric sculpture known to archaeology. Both objects were believed at first to be manuports, formed by erosion and chance to resemble the female body. Although both showed traces of red ochre, it was believed that these were the only human embellishments. However, microscopic research by archaeologist Alexander Marshak has confirmed that the Venus of Barakat Ram was incised by human hand rather than nature, 
which some now believe true of the Venus of Tantan as well. Although there is still controversy and disagreement among scholars about this, prehistoric objects that were not formed entirely by nature, but show evidence of work by human hands, are called ultra-primitive humanoid objects. It is not unlikely that these small stones bore a natural resemblance to the body to begin with, and were then incised and painted. Perhaps this is how people got the idea to create sculpture in the first place. You'll learn more about the Venus figurines later on in the lecture. A relief sculpture, or bas-relief, is a carving that appears to be raised above the background plane or surface, but is created by chiseling away and removing the background of stone. It can also be thought of as a carved drawing. The Venus figurines present a perfect example of what art scholars mean when they say that a piece of art is motivated by instinct, or in other words, is hardwired into our DNA. Across prehistoric Afro-Eurasia, Africa, Europe, and Asia form the planet's largest landmass. People who were very likely had no physical contact created the same symbols, made similar images, and created mythologies with overlapping stories. How is this possible? A predominant theory is that we carry knowledge and behavioral tendencies in our genes or DNA. The Venus figurines, which were distributed across thousands of miles of land, show the same tendency to exaggerate the reproductive aspects of the female body while near, nearly ignoring others. This tendency to exaggerate what interests us or what we value is the part of this that is thought to be hardwired. Compelling studies show that people across time and cultures exaggerate in their images of the human body what they value as beautiful, powerful, godlike, saintly. Whatever they care about the most is exaggerated in their art and especially in images of the human body. How different groups of people choose to exaggerate according to their own values, tastes, and standards is culturally motivated or learned. That they do exaggerate is instinctual. An anthropomorphic figure combines human and animal features. Another name for an anthropomorphic figure is a therianthrope. The lion man is an ivory carving, recently carbon dated and found to be 40,000 years old, and is now considered the oldest fully carved piece of sculpture. The dating of the Great Sphinx of Egypt, also a composite of human lion, is currently under dispute by archaeologists and art historians. What is especially intriguing about these pieces is that they demonstrate the capacity for imagination on the part of the rem remote ancestors who made them. Some theories suggest that images of anthropomorphic figures were seen in spiritual trance states and that the figures carved or painted of them are ritual objects. They are associated with animistic or shamanic practices of shape-shifting, practices related to trance states. Can you think of any anthropomorphic figures in popular art? Here are some anthropomorphic shape-shifting characters from our own culture. In 2006, archaeologists at the German University of Tübingen unearthed the first completely intact ivory figurine of the Old Stone Age. Dated to 33,000 BCE, the ivory carving of a mammoth and horse from a cave site in Volgoher, Germany, are the oldest carvings of animals known to archaeology. Animals captured the prehistoric imagination as powerfully as the female figure and geometric forms. 
Imagine how awesome it was to see the sight of a woolly mammoth towering overhead, a stampeding herd of bison or horses, or coming face to face with a giant cat in the wild. The anthropomorphic figures show that humans wanted to share some of the qualities of the animals who shared their world. What fascinates us is what shows up in art. Watch what a child draws, and you will see a direct demonstration of this principle. In the beginning, there was the making of a mark, carved, drawn, and painted. Our world today is saturated with imagery, so it takes effort to imagine a world without it. We take for granted picking up a pencil, pen, crayon, marker, or brush to make our mark, to communicate from the inside out. But there was a time when our distant ancestors left no marks, perhaps never thinking to do so. We seem to be the only animals who do make marks and signs with intention. Look at the markings above on the limestone wall in the Kunalda Cave in Zambia, Africa. There's an excited flurry. Marks move in different directions, overlap, and form a continuous web. This looks like a deliberate, thoughtful making that expresses interest and even wonder. The first conscious acts of making a mark were probably as astounding 250,000 years ago as high-resolution 3D computer-generated imagery, or CGI, is for us today. It sounds funny, but imagine you were the person who made the first mark in a soft surface or scratched into a rock. It's also been speculated that images may have arisen from observing shadows. See a shadow on the ground? Draw around it. But no one really knows how the idea to make images first got started. Prehistoric artists used a variety of painting methods and tools. Most likely, they began painting with their fingers, then advanced to pointed sticks, pads of moss wrapped in animal hide, or brushes made of plant fiber, feathers, or fur. Chunks of carved ochre were also used to dra draw directly onto surfaces. All paints are pigments mixed with a binder or medium, such as water or animal fat. Today, linseed oil, polymer plastic acrylic, gum arabic for watercolors, and resin are among the most common painting media. Prehistoric painters also used spraying techniques, spitting paint directly onto the surface through hollowed bone or reeds. The saliva acted as the binder. Evidence of oil lamps in painted caves suggests that they were used to paint in the darkest areas of caves. The flickering light has been seen to give an illusion of movement to the painted figures. In some sites, there is also evidence of wooden scaffolding, explaining how the ceiling has got painted. It still poses a mystery why prehistoric painters chose to paint areas that were entirely dark. In another module, when we see the second part of how art made the world, we'll see some ideas about this. It is thought now that in the darkness of the caves, experiencing sensory deprivation or no sense input, no light, no sound, Prehistoric people may have had hallucinations. This may also be associated with the trance states mentioned earlier, and that once they saw those hallucinations and the images of three-dimensional objects like, or entities like animals projected onto a two-dimensional flat surface, they got the idea to paint them.